Hi, this is Robert Kiyosaki, and you're listening to Capital Hacking. This is the most important thing you can listen to today. No, it's terrible to interrupt the flow of your favorite podcast, Capital Hacking, with this pesky commercial, but let me do it anyway. Forgive me. That is right. We have to talk about the best event coming up in April. It's April 19th and 20th. It's Learn and Grow. It's that accountable equity investor community event open not only to our current investors, but to anyone who wants to see the power of an accredited investor community. It's going to be hosted at one of the beautiful accountable equity resorts called LBI National. It's near near Renault Winery, actually. It's in New Jersey. We'd love for you to register and find out what everyone is talking about and why this type of investing, this type of mastermind community might be right for you. Check it out at accountableequity.com. Choose, learn, and grow. Thank you. I have a dream. With great power comes great responsibility. I can do this all day. Shit, don't get scared now. They may take our life, but they'll never take our freedom. Cinderella story out of nowhere. It's in the home. That the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Welcome back to, there's my little uh, tomahawk. Uh, welcome back to the big show, Capital Hacking. My name is Josh McCown. Today, John and I are in studio. Yes, we are having some fun. And uh, we just interviewed Mark Schwager. And this guy is a giant in the world of paychecks and uh, human resources. And he, he starts us out with uh, some experiences in college that shaped his life selling vacuum cleaners door to door. Yeah. Great episode. If you're in business, if you want to understand how, uh, really how, how to maximize your, let's say incentives to your, your own staff and to build a better culture, really great content for that. And also watch out for the vertical stacking of all the different benefits he's created for his company and how that compounds on itself. Like that we'll call it capital hacking. It, it changes his future because of the way he intentionally set up his business. So a lot to learn from that. I think you're going to love this show. And Mark talks about how he built 45 streams of income and you're going to learn how he, how he does that. Mr. Mark Schwager gets to be here and I get to see him for the second time in a few days, John, this is my lucky day. Yeah. I think we're all so lucky because the three of us got to spend a weekend together and here we are on a Monday hanging out and uh, you know, interviewing an amazing friend of ours, Mark Schwager. Mark, can you give us a little background story on who you are? And then uh, after a few minutes, bring us up to speed. Yeah, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, Kent Island Resort did not disappoint. Well, well done. Uh, always you. have had the last couple of times there. It's been, uh, it's been truly amazing. Uh, so yeah, so, so myself, I am 50, ripe 53 years old and um, grew up in New York above the city. Uh, well, when you say upstate, when you say upstate New York, people from Buffalo get pissed off when you really mean right above the city. So uh, we'll just <laughs> say I'm, I'm in the Hudson Valley area. I uh, grew up in a small town called Carmel and uh, just enjoyed the, uh, the space out there for 25 years. I uh, went to uh, Frostburg, Maryland, uh, Frostburg State University. We call it the real FSU at Frostburg. So that's a <laughs> little town in, outside Morgantown, West Virginia and uh, studied business. And uh, really what got me on my, uh, my train to entrepreneurship is uh, I went to work for uh, Electrolux uh, vacuum cleaners yeah. at the time, selling door-to-door -door vacuums. So my claim to fame was I sold uh, Bruce Willis's housemaid when uh, he was with uh, Demi Moore. Uh, I, got <laughs> to sell them, I got to sell them a vacuum for $2,500. And, uh, you know, I just, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed making my own time, making my own money. All my buddies were smoking weed being like lifeguards on a, on a beach. And I was out pushing doors and, and making, uh, you know, six times the amount of money and probably half the time. So it was just one of those things that I really had a, had a great mentor out of the gate made me listen to, uh, John or Tom Hopkins tapes yes. before, before Tony Robbins was, uh, was the beast that was, uh, was Tommy Hopkins and, uh, just kind of got into that space of creating your own destiny. So, uh, that's that was my entrepreneurial venture, and then I went right into payroll from uh, from that. So I worked a uh, big, big, giant uh, ADP payroll company. And uh, some people have a passion for you know uh, certain things. Mine was always payroll. I still do payroll to this day. 
and uh, started Infinity HR in 2008 with my partner, Scott. And uh, it's been an amazing ride ever since. We're on our 15th year. Uh, we have 100 employees around the country, and we've developed a number of uh, passive income streams from that revenue. So we didn't take a lot of pay out of the gate. We're just starting to now, but uh, we, we've really, really furnished all the supporting entities around our company. So we're up to, well, I'm up to 45 passive income streams now, which are companies that I own, real estate projects, things like that. And, uh, couldn't be more blessed. I just feel like uh, uh, if there's a secret sauce, it's just let other people do the amazing work that they're born to do and uh, hopefully collect a small piece of the action on the way. Man, there's a lot there and Josh is chomping at the bit, but I'm going to kick it off uh, with some questions. First of all, I didn't know that you did Electrolux vacuum sales. Uh, I come from the world of uh, selling Cutco uh, through college. And so sounds like we had a similar background where, you know, we we got to meet people, uh, got to sit in front of adults when when we were teenagers through through college and, uh, you know, make presentations. And, and also I was listening to Zig Ziglar and yep. Brian Tracy and Earl Nightingale and all those old classics uh, yep. really feed in my mind. Um, so, Mark. After, after you left college, well, first of all, what did you, what did you major in? So originally I went to, I originally went to Kent state for a year just because I was a track athlete and they were D one for, uh, for the pole vault, which was my event and, uh, barely made the team. Um, and, and I was, I went for architecture cause my dad's a mechanical engineer. This is how funny life is, right? He used to get taken out by architects all the time for lunches and yeah. fine dining and stuff like that. So they're like, Oh, these guys must make all the money. So he's like, you should be an architect. Cause I was good at mechanical drawing, but didn't have a skill in the world about art. You need to be an artist to be an architect. So I went to school without any of that knowledge or data. And I had a miserable experience. Uh, and I'm so glad I did. Cause unless you're Frank Lloyd Wright or one of the big architects, you ain't making any money. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I got a double backed, uh, I, we didn't have the internet back then. So in 89, I looked at the great American book of colleges, look for business and look for D three track and Frostburg came up as like top 10 in the country. And I was like, Oh, cool. That's oh. in between here in New York. Let's try it out. And I've met some of my best friends there at Frostburg. Uh, you guys know, Pat Hyben. He, uh, got me kicked off in the fraternity there and, and just en enjoyed the experience. And I met my uh, my bride there of twenty five years. Oh ago. wow, so, man! So many everything happens things. for a reason. It's amazing. I, I, I love it. I mean, I, I think what we'll do, if you don't mind, is we're going to turn this into a class for the for the students like myself listening. And if we could break it into a couple extremely important things that you're teaching us, and, and I think the third one we'll get to is how it all culminates in Infinity HR. But let's go back to the beginning of your journey on a mentor. It, this 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 idea of a mentor and and their first recommendation I, I, you already said it but can you drive home that because we have so many great people that work with us and I'm, I'm hoping they're finding mentors even within our ecosystem what was that all about when you joined Ele Electrolux yeah so I had a um, uh, a mentor who's my first sales manager Ira Grossman without even knowing anything about him you can you have that visual picture in your head oh, yeah short Smart little guy. stocky guy. Uh, he uh, kind of looked like Louis De Palma. What's it, what's his name from Taxi? Uh, he, was, <laughs> okay. he was that kind of kind of build, and he would drill me every day because he didn't want to do the cold calling because he was you know at that point fifty five sixty years old. So he trained me on on how to open up doors and get appointments. So I would do nothing in the first six or seven weeks, but just cold call, make appointments, and he would drag me out on every call. And uh, they have Electrolux has a presentation just like Cutco. It's genius. It's designed for. To, to walk away with something uh, of a sale. So he had uh, this uh, presentation that uh, allowed him to basically spread out dirt everywhere on these little white napkins with their vacuum. And he says, everybody has a DTL, a dirt tolerance level. So that was his thing. He would basically take their vacuum, you know, go a couple times in the same spot with his vacuum and put these little white towels in the, in the, in the new vacuum and invariably pull up all this dirt and hair and dust and all that stuff. It was, it was kind of nasty, but at the end of the day, he would have six or seven of these piles of dirt with night white napkins. And at some point the woman or the man who was buying would be like, I'm I've seen enough. That's their dirt tolerance level. So they either bought or kicked them out of the house. So, uh, he would sell these vacuums for me in the first couple of weeks. And I made like 
for, you know, high school kid, 2,500 bucks is a lot of money. That's like half yeah. the summer for all my buddies that are lifeguarding. Right. So, uh, so I would, I would come home with all this cash and, and work basically five or six hours, five or six appointments and, uh, kind of just opened my eyes. to so what's possible, right? Why that trading time for money thing was not a part of my, my aura anymore after, after seeing that experience. So that really kicked me off and, uh, it wasn't amazing. It was just a uh, door-to-door vacuum salesman job, but, but that got me in the scope of how, you know, the wheels were turning. How do I figure out a way not to be trading time for money in that, in that eight hour day sense? Yep. And, 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 you know, without a doubt, I think the secret to any entrepreneurial journey and if you're listening today and you're saying, well, I, I really would love to own my own business. I do think, I mean, again, this is just our opinion. Sales is the, is the key. Mm. If you can work on sales and, and even if you're the world's best engineer with the world's best idea, say you do have that, whatever that idea is, please go and learn how to sell. Because yeah. at the end of the day, the transaction, the fundraising, the whatever it's going to be is not going to happen unless people can feel the transmission of value from your communication. And, and you have to have that courage. I mean, sales is the ultimate, uh, what do you call rejection? Sure. Because what is it? What, 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 when you were having that mentor, I imagine he had a number. You need to, you need to get 10 no's to get one yes or nine no's to get one yes. What was his number that he told you that helped you psychologically get ready for the no? 10 appointments get two sales. That was his, that was his thing. So you get, and you have to make 50, 50 calls to get those 10 appointments. So, uh, you know, everybody's got a different number for up closing ratios, but, uh, but yeah, that, that was his specific drive, which got me into appointments. And even to this day with our, our, our daughter, we just uh, bought a franchise and she's calling on baseball fields to try to organize events. She, we put together a little sheet for her, how many calls you got to get to get to uh, a decision maker. And it's, it's about the same ratio. So it's, it's, it's invaluable yeah. information. So, Mark, actually, I, I want to take a, a slight detour here because it's really interesting what you're talking about, uh, this this company that you and Brooke are a part of and some other GoBundance brothers. Can you talk about uh, that company specifically and what Brooke's role is and how she's going to grow it? Sure. Yeah, my, my daughter, Brooke, she's 20, uh, 22 now, and uh, she not a school person, right? So she's getting her associate's degree at a, at a community college. And, uh, you know, some people don't, don't jive with that. Don't they, they look at, you know, you got to go to a four-year school, you got to spend 50 grand a year and do this. And, you know, it, it, the math doesn't work for me anymore. So I'd rather take that quarter million bucks and figure out something exciting that she's excited about. So we bought a franchise called Middle School Matchups. And it's owned by actually an um, uh, ex-GoBundance guy, but Daniel Himmel out of Texas. He has uh, five or six markets right now that are crushing it. So they basically design events that are around baseball and seven-on-seven -seven, uh, flag football matchups for middle school kids. So middle school kids don't get to showcase their talents in a lot of arenas for baseball specifically. It's always high school, high school, high school. You get on a club team here or there. But these take the, this takes the, the club team and organizes a couple events a year that are huge that they can showcase their talent to scouts, to high school coaches, to people that are in the know about baseball. I'm, I mean, I, I know enough about baseball to be dangerous, but I'm not a baseball guy. But this franchise is super cool, and uh, we're just excited that she wants to be a part of it. And She's working for free right now, and she's got 50% equity over three years buy-in. Uh, the investors uh, bought the franchise, and uh, we're, we're holding her accountable for, for being successful. So, so I just want to highlight that because I love what you're doing, and, and our oldest, Luke, he's finishing – community college and then transferring to a four-year school. So we're right in line with that. But the fact that you and some other of our good friends went in financially with that, with that type of equity and Brooke is coming in with her sweat equity over the next three years, guys. So it's not like she's getting anything for free. She's got to work this business over the next three years. And then she gets a 50% equity stake, man, that that's genius. Yeah. And, and you know what? At the end of the day, if it doesn't go well or it fails miserably, at least you'll know how, what it's like to run a business into the ground and figure out, hey, that's that, you know, we got to tweak something. <laughs> now, without a doubt. I mean, now here's the thing, though. Um, when your father, you've how many other children? Just a few others? Or... I, I have three, three daughters. And she's the oldest at this point or no? You, you know, Josh, my my uh, my motto is it takes the man to make a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Got to explain it so we don't get in trouble. What, you, what does that mean? I don't know if I know oh, that. It's just a funny thing. It takes a man to make. A, I, I only have girls, so that's that's what oh, I call that. Oh, you're the man, <laughs> and all yeah. you can produce is women. Got it. That's right. Therefore, so let's go back to um, 
I wasn't gonna. Even I didn't touch know where that. that was going, bro. I didn't know where, we got to make sure we're we're not gonna get sued by anybody here sometimes. <laughs> but uh, let let's talk about um, the fact is not everybody. I I mean, look, our home is like we try to actually encourage entrepreneurship and and tenacity, but I find it it's a delicate balance. Did you did you have to walk a thin road there to make sure she was interested and not pushed? You know, we, we don't push anybody on anything and we don't have a lot of athletes in our family because frankly, I, you know, I, I mean, I was an athlete. I lettered in three different sports in high school, but, um, I didn't get the feeling that any of them were super interested in athletics and I, right. and I'm not, a, I'm not a pusher and that goes the same with entrepreneurship. Josh, I, I think that the main thing that, that we do or I do in my family is just lead by example. They see me getting up every day and right. grinding and, and I don't look for any credit. I'll tell you, I mean, I'm nobody even knows what I do in this office. We have a hundred employees. I mean, there's a, there's a sign above my office that says the janitor's closet because somebody <laughs> thought it was funny because they're like, who is this guy? So, and, and I kept it there. I just, I enjoy that. I really don't have a lot of responsibility and uh, I, I'll take credit for, you know, just building people up and, and letting them do what they got to do. So yeah, we don't push anything in my house. Brooke just gravitated. She watches me do things and realizes this life is awesome. And I want, I want that for myself. The other two haven't really shown an interest. So and, right. and that's fine too. Yeah. It's interesting. It's an interesting experience for any of us uh, raising children that are becoming adults, not sure how to do it, but then you watch John, John's son is uh, probably going to eclipse John as like a world-class salesperson, world-class business builder. Um, he's just a dynamo, Luke. Luke yeah, yeah. All, all, all three are going to yeah. are going to eclipse me, which uh, is exciting because yeah. that's that's the very that's hard. The goal as a parent. It is, and it's and it feels anyway. We don't want to get into uh, what it feels like, but it, it feels you always have to check your ego at the door. Like which what ego you know. By the way, really crazy story. This has nothing to do with it. is the gentleman. Um, have you ever seen this movie called My uh, All American? No. Oh man, about UT University of Texas, Freddie Steinmarker. If you guys are looking for a video, a movie, I think it's on Netflix right now. I think it's on Netflix. It's incredible. But it was one of those stories where the dad did push the boy, but the boy really wanted to play the football. So it was like a perfect marriage, kind of like Luke in a sense. Luke looks like he loves being pushed, but he's also like pushing himself. It's kind of a perfect blend. That anyway, cool. that's enough parenting advice. I don't have any mm -hmm. secret to tell other than just stay on it and love the kids. Well, what yeah. I wanted to, uh, what the reason I was asking you what you majored in, because sales has such an impact in our lives, especially when we're going through college and, and we get to taste some level of success and we work our butts off. And, you know, you said you were working a few hours and your buddies were, I felt like I was working around the clock and, uh, and I was getting punched in the face every day. And I just just kept getting up to get punched in the face again. I just wouldn't stay down. With Cutco. With Cutco. Oh. Yeah, I just wouldn't stay down. I just kept pushing forward. And then that got me sort of into sales, uh, which uh, you know I became a personal trainer. So I was marketing myself with no help. Um, but you went into um, payroll. So were you involved in sales uh, with the payroll company How, what did that look like adp yeah a a adp there. is uh we look for folks that have some sort of adp or paychecks experience because they're the you know they're the big giants they have the money to invest yeah. in superior training programs and uh you know frankly they're always looking for young aggressive uh folks uh to stock their offices and it, that the burn and churn rate is is enormous but that's that's what they look for they look for young people that are excited about selling and it doesn't have to be, you know, payroll is just pick, pick something, right? That payroll just happens to be what they sell. And I was just on look, watching TV the other night, ADP has an open for golf. So, I mean, they, you know, this is, they do national advertising for a payroll company. That's, that's pretty impressive. Wow. So, um, so that's, that's where I cut my teeth in uh, kind of an organized training program, not just the guys giving me Tommy Hopkins tapes and uh, doing that, but, but uh, I have two mentors at ADP that were just amazing, uh, Ed Bitterly and Phil Eisenman. They uh, really got me in the space of team sales so that you know you, you have President's Club every year, you try to do 150% yeah. of quota, that sort of thing. So whenever you're stocked against 40 or 50 people and everybody gets to see everybody's production, that's a driver too. They didn't even pay mm. us a lot of money. We just wanted to win. We wanted to sell enough to have that number next to us that were, that puts us in the top top five or six and in, in 40, 40 sales reps in the region. So that was that was also kind of an eye opener for me because the way we develop develop our sales force now is we try to do a, a similar thing by rewarding. We have a presence club. We're going to Thailand in two weeks, so wow. we take the top we take the top producers from wow. that and their spouses and go on a, on a magical trip once a year. 
So we've taken a little bit out of that. Yeah, and, and since you did, I mean, as we're talking about Infinity HR, uh, let's let's use this as a case study for for us. Even I'm learning here, Professor. What is the matrix or the program you've put in place that you? Because you, it sounds like you boiled together pure entrepreneurship, then you meshed in with the ADP Ultra Training Program. What did you end up deciding was the right business development strategy for Infinity HR? How did you build the sales department? Well, at first, uh, because both my partner Scott and I are, are sales reps uh, in, a, in, a, in another entity, we know how whiny we are as far as squeaky wheel gets the degree. So we, we're very convincing. When we want something, we try to push for it. So we were like, well, let's see if we can do the sales. We'll market through broker channels, which are yeah. you know 1099 type contractors. They don't get benefits or we don't tell them what to do other than giving them the pamphlets and say, here, let's go out and sell this. So that worked out great for the first five years. And then we were, we were kind of approached by a couple of really stellar sales folks for these competitor brands. And they were attracted to us because we were nimble. We were quick. We make decisions. We, we act. Right. Action is really what we're about, right? I mean, most, most people, they just sit on buttons and, and try to figure it out and then they, they never pull the trigger. So we're very quick to act on something. Sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's good. So we attracted these sales folks and you know, that that's where some challenges come in because now you got to your salespeople are your internal customers. So you have to treat them like that. The culture and, mm. and Josh, I know you're very into culture or, or with your organization. Yeah. We are all about culture here. So, uh, you know, we talked about the dream manager program we have in place. Oh, for yeah, all our that, folks. That's right. But, uh, you know, salespeople, they just want, they want, show me where the money is. So, so we've, we've kind of tweaked our, our, our strategy a little bit. So we have, I think about a dozen salespeople around the country internally uh, in various markets and um, just go from there. But uh, we don't have a robust sales force like an ADP paychecks. Yeah, no, and you've, you've done a great job with your business. Now, we're going to, uh, there's another part of his business. First of all, we have to define it. And if you have another question, can I ask? So we're going to ask you to define what Infinity HR does. And then we're going to talk, after that, we'll talk about how you built a vertical integration matrix uh, that really was intelligent and is really going to pay dividends over the long term. But before then, let's step back. What is Infinity HR? Because You've used the word payroll and paychecks a few times or payroll, but it's far more than that, right? It's far more than that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if somebody's with ADP or paychecks, we, we kind of spin it as this is not the same arrangement. It's not going to be the same price. Uh, so what we are is a professional employer organization, otherwise known as a PEO. Uh, so what, what that allows a small company to do is tap into a host of benefits. I use my aggregation model, which means uh, we are connected via a co-employment contract. So, Josh, when you know one of your entities comes with Infinity, I essentially hire your employees on my payroll and then lease them back to you for a labor cost. Now, that labor cost includes everything you're already paying, so all your statutory taxes, your employer taxes, your workers' comp insurance, because I have a master policy with mm -hmm. you know millions of dollars in premium that the carriers generally give us much better rates than you get on your own. And then I also offer uh, you know things like uh, health insurance, dental, vision, life, anything that you're going to give to them as a W-2 employee from a benefit standpoint. So you essentially tap into an off-site HR department uh, in respect to some of the work and the streamlining of what we do with the payroll, because everything surrounds the payroll. So you have benefits, you have HR, you have risk management. It all flows through the payroll. So it makes sense that we do that and we do it through a co-employer arrangement so that you can access and tap into all the great benefits and the employees love it. Because now as a 10-person organization, you're offering the same types of benefits as you would be a you know, couple thousand person group. Wow. And, uh, and sometimes better rates because we have, you know, we have 45,000 co-employees or what we call worksite employees right now. Yeah, how much of the, uh, those employees perceive themselves as co-employed or do they think they're employed by the HVAC company or the regional yep. property management company? Who do they think they work for? The, the checks and the W-2s do appear as Infinity HR, uh, but the, the relationship is spelled out in our, in our web portal. Merely your company has made an investment in us to enhance the benefits for the company so that you can tap into really amazing benefits that you might in Northrop Grumman or a government agency or somewhere that's a lot larger. So the employees love it. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a minor nuance uh, of, a, of a name on a check, but once, yeah. you know, once that's explained to them, it, it's just a, you know, kind of a pass through. How did how did you and Scott come up with this right. concept? Because man, it is, I mean, that's pretty amazing that you're providing not just the payroll but all the benefits and 
like a human resource, almost like a, a we work for companies for you know HR and paychecks. But how did you come up with this concept? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to take credit for coming up with the idea. We'll use the uh, the R and D phase of our uh, lifestyle, which is rip off and, and deploy. So we uh, we worked for a company. <laughs> we worked for a company for ten years uh, as sales reps and uh, really understood the model because yeah. it was. Uh, uh, an owner that wasn't very present. So he did a lot of things great. Uh, he wound up buying jet company in India and did all this crazy stuff. And, and he was never around for it when we needed him. So we're like, you know what, F this, let's go out and start our own thing. And um, it worked out great because we had a couple of clients that uh, were near and dear to our hearts over the years that, that decided to, to jump ship with us and, uh, and, and enjoy the, the ride. And uh, it's, it's been great ever since. And the PEO, I think is what you said it was, right? Professional Employment Organization. Correct. That model is like, how old is that model as a legal structure? Yeah, you know, it started out with kind of the the, the union uh, philosophy, wow. you know. So, you know, you got you got buying power in numbers, uh, except we, we take out the, the union reps and all the dumb shit because, that, yeah, bad, <laughs> that those guys stuff. put in place. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we privatize it. And uh, the, the legal contract has been around, gosh, probably... 40 years, uh, the co-employer yeah. contract. It's been tweaked since. There's a lot of liability now. I mean, uh, we have employment practice liability that we include yeah. in all our contracts just because you know we're getting drug into lawsuits that we don't even have anything to do with. But because of the nature of the contract, we need to protect yeah. ourselves. So so we, we love California and we hate California. It's a big revenue state, but man, that's where all the silly stuff happens. So if you got any properties in California, Josh, uh, wait, wait, wait for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually been offered many times. And I always say, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure we should do that. Yeah, we have smart. two, we have two compliance folks in an HR related capacity that just deal with our California clients. And it's just like, Oh, you know what? The, since, since we've done the deep dive and everyone who's listening and you own a company of any level and you have employees taking the W-2, I highly encourage you to double check this model. And uh, Mark um, and I have talked about it a few times for our own businesses, and I'm still still trying to get my head around it for when it's a large scale or larger scale company. But I know you do handle anything from what, the four person company to the thousand person company? What What is a typical sweet spot? That was my exact next question. Yeah, um, one of you guys are on the same late wavelength. Well done. <laughs> I um, we have a specific relationship with the IFA, which is the International Franchise Association. So it's us mm -hmm. and a few other uh, PEO Smart. type organizations that are referred. So we get referred normally at the franchise or level, and then they deploy it to the franchisees when they buy them. So typically, Smart. hotel groups, uh, you know, uh, Marriott type companies, and then we have uh, you know even like. One of our franchises is called Wagon Wash, which is the the little uh, uh, stop ins with your dog, and you, you know it's almost like a car wash for yeah. for pets. And then you walk in, they have this beautiful uh, fresh cookies for the dogs in a buffet style. So you go in, you get all your stuff, your supplies, wow. and you wash your dog. It's it's really cool, yeah. Where so, the, you know, and that's a successful business these days. That's yeah. actually, that has nothing to do with anything, but it's really curious. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I would do it. Their headquarters out of Denver, and then uh, they have I think uh, fifty franchises around the country. So it's pretty them. cool. Amazing. Now, Mark, earlier uh, when you were introing, you said that you have 45 streams of income and a lot of us in GoBundance uh, know about streams of income. But could you talk about what like what that's the like how to build multiple streams of income? What interesting things that you're involved in and how can listeners start building their streams of income? Great question, John. I just uh, did my my passive income sheet here which Ooh, is um he was prepared double, double sided now but Damn, no I, I, I try to update it uh obviously as we get uh, additional investments but uh you know it started out with just purely commission plays so we have a an a benefits organization that is a broker relationship. So like a health insurance broker, uh, I have a health and life license in 26 states. So that allows me to take advantage of commissions that um, are basically offerings that we give to all our, our amazing employees. So started out there where we were just getting, you know, we'll call it free money, but it is, you know, you have to maintain licenses. You have to, you know, have some level of accountability for offering benefits and all that good stuff. So there is work involved. It's just that my amazing team is doing the work, not myself. So I call that passive because it's just basically com collecting checks per month. And then, uh, you know, with, with that, we started investing in small companies that support us uh, in a brand mm -hmm. standpoint. So we have an AI company that focuses on uh, getting data for workers comp that allows them to spin quotes around for PNC brokers that normally take two or three weeks. Because when you, you know, you're swinging a hammer in Washington state, it's different than swinging a hammer in, in, in Connecticut or New York. But if you have a company that's in those states, 
you have to take all that risk into calculation. And it's, it's a tremendous ordeal to figure out if this is a good risk. So this software is a learning software. We give it, we give eyeballs to all our employees to the software. And over the last three or four years, they've been dialing into a 95% accuracy. They can quote something that normally takes weeks. They wow. can spin it around in, in, in sometimes hours. So That's it's a, amazing. it's a really cool technology and we're excited about that. They're doing a, they're doing a raise right now. And, um, just, just exciting to be a small part of that. So those types of companies that support us in a, yeah. in a technology and brand standpoint, we've been investing in. Yeah. And then of course, you and I have talked, I don't know if you talked much about the captive insurance work you're doing, but if I were to summarize the genius of what you've built is you add value at so many different levels. You try to help each client maximize everything they could possibly get out of benefits and whatever. And there's opportunities in there to build multiple businesses and or partner with multiple businesses. And yeah. this is like a, I don't know what else you want to call it other than vertical integration. Sometimes you might mm. call some of these components. I right. call it, the, this is the way I, you know, back, John, I always joke on this phone, this, this web, a podcast, capital hacking to me meant a lot of these kinds of concepts because I, I watched the ultra wealthy and the, the people that own businesses realize that they're throwing off byproducts. Every time you sell something, you're selling a byproduct. And if you just start to flip your mindset to find those byproducts, you know, never take any momentum or don't take your foot off the gas of building the business that you were already born to do. But there's so many things that are, you can either partner with others to add secondary values to other people. And I think that's, you've made that your uh, mission, Mark. Yeah. And I, and I think it's also has to do with just throwing it out into the universe where, you know, mm. we're always looking for opportunities. So we've turned sales rep, we've turned vendors, we've turned clients into not only friends, but partners through businesses because they know that we're looking. We're always looking to support yeah. good folks and good people. And and that's how our, our recruiting company, Talent Tuition, started five years ago. We just had a sales rep that was like, I'm done with this shit. My wife's an HR director. We're going to partner up and start a recruiting firm. And we're like, we need a recruiting company because I've spent, you know, we've we, we've cut those checks for $50,000 to look for a C-level person. Josh, I don't know if you, know, you, got, you got some talent on your squad. I'm sure you're cutting those checks yeah. too. So what yeah. we do is we incorporate a model that, it, that basically a recruiting engine, a company is in, included with our PEO services now, and that furnishes that organization. We have a passive play into that as well. So, and they just hit a, they just hit the, their, their first milestone, which is a million dollars in revenue after three years of business. So we're, we're super excited about that. Mm. You know, something that, uh, Mark, you know, and I, I cherish our friendship and and oh, is he taking a picture? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just showing you the uh, clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, but but what, but something that we were we were talking about a few weeks ago when we were interviewing Tim Road, and I love how he says, "I learned to uh, wake surf or surf in other people's wakes," mm -hmm. and you have done that through your life. Um, you know, it seems like any any time I'm jumping in on something, Mark's like, "Yep, I'm in with you." So you know, you and I are partners in three different current endeavors which is so exciting along with your partner, Scott, and um, the way you build relationships, the way you support others, it is not a surprise that you're so successful. I appreciate that, man. Yep. And I, I, I'm, as we listen to these shows sitting on this side of the mic, I always think, what is the best title for this show? Because because ultimately it's like the journey to vertical integration through sales. It's, it's, it's how to add better quality to your staff through uh peos and through the best benefits you could possibly offer them i got a lot of things i'm taking away from the show so thank mm. you so much mark yeah that's cool man yeah I appreciate you guys as we wind Not, down mark uh i wish i wish i had uh more of a cool offering like we uh we give one of ozzy boyd snake when you when you sign up with with payroll yeah you can do that <laughs> how you about can do that, that? That guy's nuts. That's, that's the. I mean, he's not nuts. I can't. I'm so proud of him for building such a gigantic business out of snakes. Yeah, his it story is, is great. I, I listened to your interview with him. It's, it's it's amazing. He's a mutant. He's a mutant. He does mutant. What is it? He's an X man. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, how do people find you, brother? Yeah, so uh, you can look uh, Instagram. We're at um, Infinity HR uh, with an I. Just make sure Infinity with an I, and then. Um, my email simply mark at infinityhr.com. Mark, thank you so much for spending the time with us. We loved the show. Thank, thank you, buddy. You, yeah. Thank you, guys. Bam! Straight!
We just got, yeah, to buddy. End, we got to the end of another great show. And everyone listening right now, you're the family. Family and friends, fun. thanks for staying till the end. That was so fun. And hey, hit the like, hit subscribe. We're here to serve you guys. That's why we're doing this show. Josh is not paying me. I'm doing this off of my quote unquote sweat equity because we want to make a difference in your life. And then that ripple effect will continue to touch the world. Hey, amen, brother. Please check us out on capitalhacking.com, all the social media threads. And yes, I know you've probably already sent this episode to one of your best friends. Thank you. We <laughs> love you. Just, just go right into your iPhone, hit the plus symbol. We'll talk to you later. See you next week. Share, share, share. <laughs>